before we begin this, I'm not even sure if I should be calling you sir. Can I call you Art or should I just be bowing? Because really, you know, you are not just a staple point in entertainment, a staple point in Canadian entertainment. You are the measuring stick. Uh, but also like your family, because I grew up watching you in every aspect there was and is. So can I, I, this is the first time I've ever done this. May I call you Art? Oh yes. You know, definitely call me Art. <laughs> and, uh, whatever you do, don't call me Arthur because when somebody calls me Arthur, it's usually because I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Art. Right off the top, I want to say congratulations. I want to make sure I'm reading this correctly. Of course, you are the recipient of the 2022 Award of Excellence for Actra Toronto. How does it feel being able to receive such another honor in your uh, incredible <laughs> career? Well, first of all, Rudy, uh, they haven't given it to me yet. They can nope. still take it. They can still take it away. So <laughs> I'm going to be <laughs> the recipient. Um, you know, I just was talking to my agent about it. She was talking about it. And, and uh, the first the first word that came into my mind that I, I privately turned and said to my wife was, it's embarrassing, you know? It's a bit of, well, because I'm, you know, I'm very shy. You know, most people don't know that about me. And, and, and a lot of actors I know who are shy. They come from, uh, you know, shy, growing up shy as kids and, uh, and so, as funny as it sounds, you know, uh, having all this attention on me, on m my persona, instead of on my characters and the things I do on film, is, is a bit, uh, it's a bit out of what I like to do. I'm not in this for awards or, uh, or you know, recognition. Um, I've all... <laughs> I always remind myself, you know, that when I started acting, all I wanted to do was have somebody hire me as an actor. That's all. Just, just say, you know, I want to hire you. I don't care if you pay me, you know, just, <laughs> just recognize that I'm an actor because, you know, I grew up loving actors and, and I'm like you watching, watching television and, uh, and, you know, Hollywood was a million miles away from my when I grew up in the beaches, uh, it, you know, and even even when I I got to be a young man and was trying to decide what to do. Acting wasn't really an option because there wasn't really anywhere to go unless you got we went to the National Theater School and unless you had some training in high school. I didn't even have that. I didn't even have high school. I, I don't think I, I didn't get very far in high school. So, you know, it was just struggling and, uh, you know, and I had kind of a wander thirst when I was a, a late teen hitchhiking all over North America, actually. Um, I knew somebody in San Diego and I used to hitchhike down there, or drive my little sports car down there. I, my first time I drove down there in my sports car, I was 17. <laughs> so, so, you know, I had to get all that out of the way. And then I became a stockbroker because I was being pressured to make money because I had kids. I had uh, two kids with a third on the way. And I, so I was a stockbroker and I did really well, but very unhappy. So then I just decided one day, you know, hey, I know, why don't I become an actor? And I actually had gone to a theater and watched a play. And then I went back to see them the next day. And I said, I want to be an actor. Can you help me? And and long story short, there's a there's a funny story in there, but yes, they did. You know, it's people don't realize this, and I want I would love for you to go into this because when we see today, there's so many, many, many channels out there who are creating their own television series and movies, Canadian sure. channels doing all these things. I remember back in the day, CBC and maybe CTV. But it wasn't the, and you know, not their fault, but it wasn't great production. And a lot of times it was literally ignored unless, you know, we tried to recognize as much as possible. Knowing the fact that it was so limited, why did you still, I, you said you were unhappy, but still, why take a shot at something that was so limited, especially as a Canadian 
And then please explain what do you think you did in breaking through that wall? Well, I didn't know. <laughs> First of all, I didn't. I didn't know that, you know, if you if you if you try to be an actor that, you know, you, you weren't going to get any work. You know, I, I it just didn't occur to me. You know, I just thought if if you if you work hard at it, just like I did as a stockbroker, I I wanted to uh, I thought I'd get into the stock market. Somebody advised me to do that. So I I went from door to door down Bay Street, knocking on uh, brokers doors and, and saying you got a job. And, and this one guy took a chance on me and made me a a margin clerk, you know, which is like in the lowest end of the of the brokerage. And, you know, but I worked very hard and, and eventually about a couple of years later, got my license and became a trader and became very successful, became a for some reason I could read the ticker tape really well. And and, uh, you know, that's just something we learned. And, uh, you know, I did I did really well. And I thought, you know, I'll just apply all that to being an actor. I, I actually started, uh, <laughs> the woman I talked to, she said, well, go to this address next week and there'll be a guy there and he'll tell you what to do. And I said, that's it. And she said, yeah. So I, <laughs> I showed up at this address and the, you know, she had told me, you know, wear jeans, don't wear that nice $500 suit. And I showed up and uh, there was this guy, I said, you're Bill. And he said, yeah, I said, you're going to, I want to, I'm the guy that wants to be an actor and you're going to tell me what to do. He says, yeah, grab a shovel. <laughs> and we were going to clean out a building that had been closed for five <laughs> years. And uh, they were going to build a theater. And, uh, and so that's how I started I, knee deep in, uh, you know, whatever's built up there for five years in this building. What was the difference from, you know, getting jobs and working in Canada to say working in the U.S. L.A. What was the big difference for oh, you? Back back then, it was night and day. The things things are a lot better now, or probably closer to to the same now. But back then, um, you know, you didn't get a you didn't really get a script here. You didn't know what you were reading for. You 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 were lucky if you you, you got a, a some couple of pages of script. Uh, and uh, down there, they sent the scripts to your home. Uh, their their attitude down there in L.A. when I moved there was uh, whoever walks in, the next guy walking in could be the next Clark Gable. So they treated everybody really well. Um, I remember in Toronto auditioning, I think, I guess it was a commercial which is mostly what we were doing back then. And I remember we were, a bunch of us were sitting in the hallway on the floor because there was no chairs provided. And uh, I remember looking up and down and it was Aykroyd and Candy and Dean Levy and Martin Short and uh, uh, Gilda Radner and Catherine O'Hara and Andrea Mar Martin and and we were funnier than the thing we were the commercial the funny commercial we were going into audition for but that was it we were all sitting on the floor you know having a ball and then when they said when they said next you know you oh I don't want to okay you want to go I, you know <laughs> so it was it was quite different um, I remember auditioning for Bob Clark for Black Christmas. And uh, I had some couple of pages. And in fact, my part was so small uh, that an American was doing it. They had to give me his lines so I could read something for Bob. So when I finished, he kind of shook his head and I said, I can, I can do it better. I can do it better. Let me do it again. He said, no, no. He says, you're great. He says, I wish I could hire you for that part. But, you know, it was already... Be because back in those days, Rudy, they had this uh, Canadian content rule where it was 65% Canadian content in any in these productions, right? That's right. Well, producers aren't stupid. They realized, oh, that means 35% non-Canadian. <laughs> so, so, you know, you show up on set and there's the 35% non-Canadian, you know? Well, you know, that rule kind of ended up working out well for you 
for a certain movie that ended up being, for the longest time, the biggest grossing movie of all time, Porky's. Yeah, yeah. Except, <laughs> except that was the, the funny thing is that's considered a Canadian movie, and and in, in a lot of ways it was. Uh, but um, all the young guys were Americans. That's true. And uh, and uh, Porky, the guy that played Porky, Chuck Mitchell, was American. Right. Alex Karras was American. Um, the guy that I shared the cop car with was American. <laughs> uh, Susan Clark was an American citizen by that time, although she was originally Canadian. She played Sherry forever, as you, I'm sure you remember. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Unforgettable. And uh, yeah, so the, the few Canadians that were in it were actually, I think, Kim, uh, myself, Kim Cottrell, and myself, and uh, the principal, a guy named Eric Christmas. And that was pretty much it. So, and that's actually one of the reasons, one of the many reasons I had gave myself a lot of reasons to take the leap and, and move to LA, which was going to be tough because by that time I had four kids. I was separated from them, uh, supporting that household, supporting my own household. So moving there was going to be a big nut to handle. But I just got tired of, of, thinking that I was being hired because I was Canadian, right? So I wanted to go so where the big boys play and I wanted to find out. In fact, in fact, when I went in for meetings and auditions and interviews, if they started talking to me, uh, you know, they'd say, oh, you, we, did, we didn't know, we don't know about you. Where, where, are, you, where, where'd you, where are you from? I said, oh, back east. And they'd say something like, oh, do you, you miss New York? I said, oh, yeah, I miss, I miss New York. Yeah, I, I really miss New York. So I was just disguising myself. In fact, you know, a couple of times I got tripped up in the beginning because I said uh, back in those days, out and about. And they somehow <laughs> picked it up. And uh, and I became kind of in those meetings, they, they descended into... Uh, train seal kind of thing where they're saying oh say 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 house <laughs> house <laughs> <He> said, house <laughs> you know goodness. so it would just so i just trained myself i started broadening those words and uh and just so i because back, back then now it's it's special to be from canada because there's so many great people from canada you know some of the, the biggest stars in the world are canadian that's right so but back then, it was like you might as well have said you were from Norway, you know. What would you say is your favorite um, uh, role? And not just from a television series or movie. I mean the type of character. Because you are evolutionary. You can play the sweetest, nicest guy to the meanest, nastiest brute. Um, and everything in between. What is your favorite and why? Well... You know, I guess because I have no memory, um, I'll just I'll just mention the latest uh, thing I've done. It's a it's a little film called Robbery, and uh, I play a hardened career criminal who just gets out of jail after twenty years, goes back home, and and. Uh, is suffering from a little bit of dementia. I know the film. Called I've heard about this. Yes. Yes. I've heard about this. And and uh, I've won a few awards from it, and it's uh, been made the festival circuit, and it's streaming now on Apple and pre, uh, Amazon and whatever the other streams are. And I heartily recommend it's worth whatever the price is to to see it. Some people say it's the best thing I've ever done. Um, I'll, I'll tell you how, how good I, I think it is and, and what happened. So we finished, we wrapped it and the, the director and writer is a guy who had just graduated from medical school. In fact, the script on the front of the script, it says robbery by Dr. Corey Stanton. So Corey just wants to, he didn't, doesn't want to be a doctor. He wants to be a filmmaker and he's going to be, a, he's already a fabulous filmmaker and he's, he's going places. So we wrap, we wrap the film 
very low budget. I think we had, uh, uh, you talk about the series two and a half men, we had two and a half crew. Um, anyway, so we wrap it. And a, a couple of weeks later, he phones me up and he says, you want to see the movie? I said, well, he just wrapped it. He said, I know. He says, I've been in. And he lives with his parents, you know, because think money's tight for young filmmakers. He says, I've been in the basement editing it. So I said, OK. So I said to my wife, said, well, let's go down. I said, don't expect much. He had edited it. And it's probably still as close to what he originally edited. Plus, he added music to it, some original and some some stuff he, I don't know, stole or something. I sat there in the basement with his parents. He provided the popcorn. And I thought, OK, you know, we're going to see a rough cut. I swear to you, Rudy, 10 minutes into the film, I forgot I was watching myself. And that's usually, that's always the problem with an actor, is not just when he's watching his, his own work, but anything. When you're watching a TV series, when you're watching a movie, you can kind of see the, the beats and the steps and what they did. And, and, and sometimes you're distracted by, oh, that was an interesting camera move. You don't get lost into the story as much as you would like to, you know? And when you do, it's a special moment. And that, I got lost in that film. So that's, that's probably what has to be my, my favorite right now. And, you know, I mean, I loved the five years on ENG. I don't yeah. know if you remember that. Uh, of course. And uh, and Porky's, we had a ton of fun. And, uh, you know, but I'll tell you one thing, and I've said this, I hear, I'm getting sick of hearing myself say it, but a set is my Disneyland. I love it. That's where I want to be. I go to the set when I'm not working. I show up, I scare the hell out of the first AD because he sees me show up and he thinks, we're be now we're behind because I, I forgot about a scene he's in. But I'm not working that day, but he thinks I've showed up and I've, there must be a scene he's forgotten about. Now he's behind, you know. So so that's how much I love a set. And, I, you know, so, you know, they're all, it's kind of like asking your favorite kid, right? Yeah. I do, no, have, I a favorite, I do have a favorite kid. But they, <laughs> might, they, might, they might be watching this. I can't say. I have five. <laughs> what would you, what, adv oh my gosh, I'm crying right now. What advice would you give? You're crying. For, I'm, I'm <laughs> crying laughing so hard. My, my cheeks hurt. I've got um, five kids. I, I'm crying. <laughs> what advice would you give young actors today getting into business? I mean, it's a whole new story. I mean, back then we never had Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all this stuff, TikTok. A lot of people are using that as a platform to get into show business. What advice would you give to those folks out there who want to be hopefully following in your footsteps? You mean besides don't, right? <laughs> that. <laughs> I mean, that's what, a, that's what a lot of people told me. But um, yeah, no. And, and, you know, when I was a young guy, you know, I, I, I would encourage people all the time to do it. So um, and then I started changing my mind and thinking maybe maybe I shouldn't be doing that because, you know, uh, they might end up killing themselves or something and hold me responsible. Um, but yeah, there's there's things you, you got to do. Number one, do not pay a lot of money for headshots. Right? Yes. Do not pay a lot of money for headshots. All you need is a nice shot, like about this size, this screen, about this size, a pleasant shot, you know, that where they will look at it and say, I'd like to meet this person, right? That's all you need. You don't have to do it, you know, dark, you know, with mood and, you know, you're playing some character, you know. Or, <laughs> you know, it just has to be a nice shot. Number two, if you can, find a workshop, uh, an acting workshop of some kind. Do not pay a huge amount of money for acting workshops, I don't think. I think, you know, acting is a pretty, pretty particular thing. Everybody will develop their own method. Uh, everybody will develop their own attitude towards it. Um, 
there's some workshops that are better than others. Um, I probably have friends who have workshops and are watching this and saying, Art, come on, you know, what about mine? You know, but, you know, that's why I've never taught acting. I just, I just think it's just a, a very unique thing that's, you know, just certain people can do. Now, and the other thing is you can read a lot about it. You can, you can study acting. There's so many books. I recommend Stella Adler, who recommend, who originally was with the method about, you know, using your emotions and all your past life experience and all that. But then she changed and she said the best, the best thing an actor can do when he's playing a character is use their imagination. Imagine what, what a character would do in this particular situation. So that's who I ascribe to. Um, and also, you know, if you're, if you can't find those other things like a workshop and stuff like that, but you, you know, reading books, try to find plays or things that you're interested in, uh, movie scripts. There's online, you can get all kinds of movie scripts. There's a place called Simply Scripts. It's a website. You can get Casablanca's on there, but you can get together with friends who are like-minded read try out you know just sit and cold read just sit there and read the whole play spend a couple of hours together uh, pick each pick a part you want to play and just read the damn thing and and act it out and and you'll learn so much by doing that's you know and it's it's pretty simply that and you know you just have to be in a position where you you can support yourself too uh so that's that's about it. All right, I want to say this has been an honor and a pleasure to speak with you. Congratulations on this award that is coming to you, much deserved. I'm hoping when the actor awards happen, I can be there. I haven't been there for the last couple of years. In fact, the last time I was there, you and I actually did do a quick little camera interview. I had my camera there. And it was, again, such an honor. This is an honor to speak with you. And I just want to say thank you for everything that you've done for Canadian entertainment. Thank you so well, much. Well, thanks, Rudy. But uh, I just want to remind you that it's it's all viral this year. I mean, is that right? Viral or cyber? It, viral, cyber. Oh, it's cyber. Cyber. Yeah, cyber. It's, not, it's not live. It's not down at the car loop. Ah, oh, that's yeah. too bad. Well, then I'm going to have to wait till next year to run into you again. Yeah. And what I'm really, what I really, you know, it's always like, are you happy? You, you won this. I say, oh yeah, it's great. But what I really want is the Order of Canada. That's what I really want. <laughs> and much deserved on that too, my friend. Yeah, Thank well, you. it's 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 tough to do. I understand. You know, yeah, that ain't tough. They can do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Rudy. It's been great.